Section 18 of Myths Every Child Should Know. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Myths Every Child Should Know. Edited by Hamilton Wright Maybe. Section 18. The Argonauts. Part 3. How They Built the Ship Argo. In Iolcus. So the heralds went out, and cried to all the heroes of the Minuai, Who dare come to the adventure of the Golden Fleece? And Hera stirred the hearts of all the princes, and they came from all their valleys to the yellow sands of Pagasai. And first came Heracles the Mighty, with his lion's skin and club, and behind him Hylas the young squire, who bore his arrows and his bow, and Typhus the skilful steersman, and Butus the fairest of all men, and Castor and Polydices the twins, the sons of the magic swan, and Caeneus the strongest of mortals, whom the centaurs tried in vain to kill, and overwhelmed him with trunks of pine trees, but even so he would not die. And thither came Zetes and Calais, the winged sons of the north wind, and Peleus, the father of Achilles, whose bride was silver-footed Thetis, the goddess of the sea. And thither came Telamon and Oileus, the fathers of the two Iantes, who fought upon the plains of Troy, and Mopsus, the wise soothsayer, who knew the speech of birds, and Idmon, to whom Phoebus gave a tongue to prophesy of things to come and Ancaios, who could read the stars, and knew all the circles of the heavens, and Argus, the famed shipbuilder, and many a hero more, in helmets of brass and gold, with tall dyed horsehair crests, and embroidered shirts of linen beneath their coats of mail, and greaves of polished tin to guard their knees in fight, with each man his shield upon his shoulder, of many a fold of tough bull's hide, and his sword of tempered bronze in his silver-studded belt, and in his right hand a pair of lances of the heavy white ash stave. So they came down to Iolcus, and all the city came out to meet them, and were never tired with looking at their height, and their beauty, and their gallant bearing, and the glitter of their inlaid arms. And some said, Never was such a gathering of the heroes since the Hellenes conquered the land. But the women sighed over them and whispered, Alas, they are all going to the death. Then they felled the pines on Pelion, and shaped them with the axe, and Argus taught them to build a galley, the first long ship which ever sailed the seas. They pierced her for fifty oars, an oar for each hero of the crew, and pitched her with coal-black pitch, and painted her bows with vermilion, and they named her Argo, after Argus, and worked at her all day long. And at night Peleus feasted them like a king, and they slept in his palace porch. But Jason went away to the northward, and into the land of Thrace, till he found Orpheus, the prince of minstrels, where he dwelt in his cave, under Rhodope, among the savage Sycon tribes. And he asked him, Will you leave your mountains, Orpheus, my fellow scholar in old times, and cross Strymon once more with me, to sail with the heroes of the Minuai, and bring home the golden fleece, and charm for us all men and all monsters with your magic harp and song? Then Orpheus sighed, Have I not had enough of toil and of weary wandering far and wide? since I lived in Chiron's cave, above Iolcus by the sea. In vain is the skill and the voice which my goddess mother gave me. In vain have I sung and labored. In vain I went down to the dead and charmed all the kings of Hades to win back Eurydice, my bride. For I won her, my beloved, and lost her again the same day and wandered away in my madness, even to Egypt and the Libyan sands, and the isles of all the seas, 
driven on by the terrible gadfly, while I charmed in vain the hearts of men, and the savage forest beasts, and the trees, and the lifeless stones with my magic harp and song, giving rest, but finding none. But at last Calliope, my mother, delivered me, and brought me home in peace, and I dwell here in the cave, alone, among the savage Sycan tribes, softening their wild hearts with music and the gentle laws of Zeus. And now I must go out again to the ends of all the earth, far away into the misty darkness, to the last wave of the eastern sea. But what is doomed must be, and a friend's demand obeyed. For prayers are the daughters of Zeus, and who honors them honors him. Then Orpheus rose up sighing, and took his harp, and went over Strymon. And he led Jason to the southwest, up the banks of Haliacman, and over the spurs of Pindus, to Dodona, the town of Zeus, where it stood by the side of the sacred lake, and the fountain which breathed out fire in the darkness of the ancient oak wood, beneath the mountain of the hundred springs. And he led him to the holy oak, where the black oak dove settled in old times, and was changed into the priestess of Zeus, and gave oracles to all nations round. And he bade him cut down a bough, and sacrifice to Hera and to Zeus. And they took the bow and came to Iolcus, and nailed it to the beak-head of the ship. And at last the ship was finished, and they tried to launch her down the beach, but she was too heavy for them to move her, and her keel sank deep in the sand. Then all the heroes looked at each other, blushing. But Jason spoke and said, Let us ask the magic bow. Perhaps it can help us in our need. Then a voice came from the bow, and Jason heard the words it said, and bade Orpheus play upon the harp, while the heroes waited round, holding the pine-trunk rollers to help her toward the sea. Then Orpheus took his harp and began his magic song. How sweet it is to ride upon the surges, and to leap from wave to wave, while the wind sings cheerful in the cordage, and the oars flash fast among the foam. How sweet it is to roam across the ocean, and to see new towns and wondrous lands, and to come home laden with treasure, and to win undying fame. And the good ship Argo heard him, and longed to be away and out at sea, till she stirred in every timber, and heaved from stem to stern, and leaped up from the sand upon the rollers, and plunged onward like a gallant horse, and the heroes fed her path with pine trunks till she rushed into the whispering sea. Then they stored her well with food and water, and pulled the ladder up on board, and settled themselves each man to his oar, and kept time to Orpheus's harp and away across the bay they rode, southward, while the people lined the cliffs, and the women wept, while the men shouted at the starting of that gallant crew. End of section 18 Recording by David Martin